G'day everyone, welcome back. Uh, now that I've got most of the ceiling and the wall panels off, the next job is to get rid of the floor. And before I can do that, I have to remove these things, which are floor heaters. Um, there's two of them in the bus. There's this one at the front and another one at the back. Um, and they're actually connected to the coolant system. Coolant flows from the engine through to these heaters um, and loops back around to the engine. So in order to remove these, I first need to disconnect the hoses that are running underneath the bus um, and then get these out. So that's the job for today. Hopefully I can manage to do that without losing too much coolant. Um, but I know from um, reading about other people's experiences that it is a messy job. So anyway, it'll be good to get it done and uh, hopefully we'll get that sorted today. So these floor heaters are bolted through the floor. There's three bolts. There's two here and then if I come around the front here, um, there's another one here. And there's also obviously the hoses going through the floor and a wire connection as well. Okay, so I apologize for the quality of this video, but it is really awkward to get a good picture of this under the bus. Hopefully um, you can see here, I'm directly under where one of the floor heaters is attached to the floor. So you can see the two hoses that are going up through the floor and there's also wires uh, which I've unplugged. So you can see they're going up through the floor there as well. Um, and these two hoses here, um, <coughs> it's a bit hard to see because they actually connect um, directly behind this part of the chassis but anyway they're actually connected these two hoses are connected up behind here to these hoses here so if you follow this along sorry, you can see just there is where the, ho the rubber hoses are clamped onto the metal pipes that are going directly to the engine so the coolant comes from the engine along these hoses up into the heaters. So this is the one near the step at the front of the bus and the hoses go all the way to the back of the bus um, where there's another heater in the floor at the back. So now in order to get rid of these heaters and the hoses, um, obviously these hoses need to be disconnected. And what I actually want to do, if I can... Hold the torch and the camera in one hand, it's a bit tricky. Um, rather than just capping these hoses off and having two blind ends, I want to be able to loop it round so that the coolant can continue to flow freely back through the engine. Um, so I need to be able to disconnect these hoses here where they're clamped onto the metal pipe and I've got a loop, a short loop of hose that I'm hoping will fit there. Um, but it's just in a really awkward spot um, with the, I think this is the gearbox under here and everything else that's sort of in the way. It's actually really awkward to get at from under the bus. Um, but what I'm thinking is I may, um, it looks like there's a, an open space there directly above it where the floor is. So what I'm thinking is if I can disconnect the ho like clamp off the hoses there so I don't get any coolant leaking from the engine hopefully um, and if I can remove the floor heaters from the floor then I can actually take up the whole floor and I'll have much better access to this section here to do the final looping off and sealing that um, because obviously I don't want that to leak when I'm going down the highway and start losing coolant so when I do that seal when I, when I put the loop on those pipes there I want to make sure I get a really good seal so it doesn't leak and I'm just not confident that I'm going to be able to do that given that it's so awkward to be able to get out from here um, but I think if I can do that part from above with the floor gone it'll be much easier and I've got a much better chance of getting a good seal there so and also the hoses here are a lot easier to cut where they go up into the heaters so I think I'll be able to get the heaters up from here and take the floor up and then I can come back later and um, reconnect this bit here. So that's the plan in theory.
Well, I managed to do it. I got both heaters out and I also removed all the hoses um, that were attached to them from under the bus. It wasn't a difficult job, it was just really awkward trying to get to some of the, um, the hoses and the brackets that were um, holding them onto the floor. Um, just because there isn't a lot of space under the bus to work with and I have to apologize for not filming any of the actual process um, I didn't really want to take any of my cameras under the bus because firstly it's awkward <laughs> um, And there isn't a lot of space and I wouldn't have been able to hold the camera and do the work at the same time But also I wasn't sure which way the coolant was going to come out um, how much there was going to be splashing around and I can't afford to replace my camera or my phone so I just didn't want to risk it so I have to apologize for that. I can go under the bus and show you what it looks like now. Okay so I'm under the same spot where I showed you the before shots so this is where one of the floor heaters was so you can see the holes now going up through the floor um, so that's all been removed and over here is those two hoses that were connecting back to the engine so I've got those clamped off so there's no coolant leaking from the engine now and then all of the hoses that were running along here between the heaters um, that were all attached under the floor are all gone so the only bit to do now is to connect like to get rid of these hoses and connect a new piece of like a u-shape loop um, directly onto those copper pipes but as i said i'm going to um, do that once the floor is off and hopefully i'll have better access to do that from above so here's the two heaters i pulled out and the rest of the bits of hoses um, and things that were under the bus so this is now the floor without the heaters a bit more user friendly so now that that's done I can get started pulling back this vinyl and taking up the the old plywood from the floor so this vinyl is actually just stuck down fairly loosely with like a tacky adhesive should just be able to pull it up. Um, and then underneath you can see the plywood screwed down into the frame. I don't know if it's just screwed or if it's screwed and glued as well. Um, certainly in my big bus the floor was really strongly glued to the frame in addition to the screws which was really annoying. Um, anyway we'll see how we go with undoing the screws first and hopefully being able to lever up the floor. Well here is my first challenge with the floor. This all of these electrical wires are going down through the floor here um, and in order to be able to get this floor piece of the floor off I'm going to have to unplug all of these wires push them through to underneath the floor so I can lift the floor up and then I'll need to be able to plug all these back in again um, <laughs> so the ch I've got no idea what these wires do so the challenge is going to be making sure if I'm going to unplug all of these that I plug them back in exactly where they have to go so what I'm going to do is actually mark label each of these plugs um, so that when I come to plug it all back in hopefully I'll get it right when I reconnect it all first section of floor up and if I come over here you can see these are the hoses that I clamped off this morning under here and here is where they join onto those pipes that were under the bus so you can tell I've got much better access now from the top so I think it's going to be much easier when I join that piece of hose 
get access to these pipes really easily now. So that was a good plan. So all that's left of the floor now are these remnants of plywood that are still stuck to the frame. There's a few screws still sticking out that are probably going to have to be ground off um, and I need to scrape off the remnants of the glue um, and other stuff that's stuck to the frame. Oh, and remember that fuse box that I discovered full of rubbish? I managed to give that a good clean up as well. So it's looking much better. Okay, so now that I've got the floor out of the way, I'm going to have a go at finishing where I left off with these heater hoses. You can see here, this is the two sections of hose that I clamped off when I was removing the heaters from the bus the other day. And they're still... these last two pieces of hose are still attached to the pipes that are connecting them to the engine um, so what I want to do is get rid of these two separate hoses and put a single looped piece of hose around to to, um, to close off this loop and this is the piece of hose that I'm going to try and use it's the same diameter as the hoses that are already on here so it should fit over the pipe nicely um, and it's the only sort of piece I could find that had um, a u-shaped bend that was you know fairly close to what I needed here so you can see that there's uh, one join just here and the other one is a little bit harder to see but it's a bit further up here so I'm thinking if I can cut this so obviously I can join this end of the hose hopefully onto this end of this pipe and then if I cut um, this extra little curve off here um, and cut this one somewhere here hopefully I can get it to fit on there nicely and not kink too much um, it might end up having to sort of go off to the side a little bit so hopefully there's not going to be too much there that's going to be in its way um, I'm not I mean obviously it's not ideal it's the closest shaped piece of hose that I could find so I'm just going to give it a go and see what happens. The hardest part about this is going to be the fact that obviously I've got no way of clamping these pipes because they're rigid metal pipes so as soon as I take the hose off um, there's going to be coolant leaking out of here. I'm not sure how fast it's going to leak out or how much is actually going to come out. Um, there's not going to be anything I can do about it. I'm just going to have to take this hose off and get this one on as quickly as possible basically to minimize the amount of coolant that I lose. I mean worst case scenario is I lose all my coolant. I mean it's not likely to cause any damage it just means it more expense because I have to buy more coolant. Okay so the first thing I'm going to do is just try and cut this hose where I think is going to be best. Maybe here. So 
So hopefully I can get it to go on something like that. So like I said, I'm going to be able to do need to do this as quickly as possible. So I'm just going to make sure um, I've got everything in place as much as I can. So once this hose is on, obviously need to clamp it back around the pipe. So I've got these clamps here. So if I put that one on that way. And then this one needs to be on that way so uh, okay and I'm also and I've got this hot water here that I just boiled maybe if I can dip the end of the hose into the hot water um, it might help to soften it up a bit and it'll make it easier to get onto the pipe I do have a container under there to catch the coolant if it comes out um, it's a bit tricky here because of where all these engine bits are. Um, I can't actually get a bucket. There's not enough height to get a bucket under there. So they've just got this fairly shallow container. So it might splash out of there a bit. I don't know. I've got no idea. We shall see. But I've got a tarp and I'm out in the paddock. So <laughs> um, it's the best we can do. So the first thing I need to do is just unclamp these, which are a bit awkward because they're actually... A bit to grab onto is underneath. Let's see how we go. This is one bit that might have been easier to do under the bus. Ah, come on! <laughs> right, don't let it go. Well, I've managed to get these spring clamps off, so it's just a matter now of pulling the hoses. Um, so I guess I'll start with this one because this is the end that I want to try and get on first. See how easy or how hard it's going to be to... Oh wow, I can't move that hose at all. Okay. So the problem I'm having here is that this hose is just, even though I've taken the clamp off, it is just really firmly stuck onto this pipe. Um, and I can't twist it at all um, to get it off. So I'm thinking I might try cutting it um, and then pulling it off because I just, no matter how hard I twist on that, I just can't get it to budge. And this one's going to be even harder because I just can't, I don't have enough room to even get my hand around that to, to be able to get a good grip to twist it. So I'm going to go and grab a Stanley knife and see if I can just cut the top of it and sort of peel it off. We'll see. Alright, here we go. Okay, well that one wasn't too bad. <laughs> okay. I won't clamp it just yet, doesn't appear like there's any coolant leaking out of it while I've got it there. So I'm going to try 
and do the other one. This is a bit awkward. <laughs> I think soaking the ends of the hose in the water definitely helps soften them up. Do the same with this one. I'll just cut it along the top. And kind of peel it off. And there goes the coolant. It's actually not a huge amount. It's not as much as I was thinking was going to come out of there, so that's good. And that's actually gone on really easily. Um, I'm really happy with that. It doesn't actually look like it's really kinked much at all. Um, I'm not really a fan of the way it's sitting right up against that. I ended up just twisting the hoses a bit so that the loop curve pointed downwards instead of off to the side. So now it's sitting beautifully without rubbing up against anything around it. So I'm really happy with that and that's a job well done if I do say so myself. So getting those floor heaters out and the floor up from the frame was by far the biggest job so far but I'm really glad that it's done and the next job will be to give it all a really good clean and treat the little bits of surface rust that are in the frame and then I can start to put the new floor down.